Hi everyone, this is Ray. In this video, I'll be breaking down what I believe to be the essentials for executing a handstand. This video is broken down into five parts, so I'll be taking you guys through some stretches that I do before executing a handstand, and then the fundamentals of actually being able to do a handstand, some common mistakes people make when doing handstands and some exercises that can help strengthen your body and correct these common mistakes. And then lastly, I'll go through some tips of actually being able to get to that stage of doing handstands. People usually skip the stretches and warm-ups, but it's extremely important that you do these before attempting any handstands so that you'll be able to avoid injuries which can really slow your progress. Usually, I just stretch whatever I feel my body needs that day, but a good amount of reps to do is usually between 4 to 8 reps. When you do these stretches, try to put weight onto your wrists and to deepen the stretch, lean into whichever direction is opposing. For this wrist exercise, you should be initiating from your fingertips. Good hamstring flexibility can make kicking up into a handstand much easier because you require less momentum to get your hips above your shoulders. When you begin a handstand, you want to start with your dominant leg forward and in most cases, if you're right-handed, your right leg would be your dominant leg. In this case, my dominant leg is pushing off the ground so that my body is able to bring my hips over my shoulders. You should always begin by trying to get your hips over your shoulders instead of getting both legs up in the air. So, your non-dominant leg will be up in the air, pointed towards the ceiling and stretching as high as it can. Your toes should both be pointed and your hands should remain as straight as possible while engaging your core and tucking in your chest so that you're in a straight line. You should feel that you are engaging every single part of your body when executing a handstand. You can kick up from a standing position which will give you more momentum when trying to kick up. But if you're too afraid or the thought of going from standing to upside down scares you, then you can start by going on the ground with your hands shoulder width apart and try kicking up from there. If you feel comfortable kicking up against the wall and you've already practiced staying there and balancing, then you can try doing a free standing handstand. But be sure to make sure that you are falling out of the handstand correctly. There are a few mistakes that people make when trying to kick up into a handstand. And this includes trying to kick up with both legs. What this results in is you're unable to bring your hips over your shoulders and you might arch your back as a result of it. Even if you're able to kick up with your dominant leg, you may not be able to bring your hips over your shoulders. If you manage to kick up, you might still be arching your back because you're not engaging your core and lifting up high enough. Although your hands are pushing into the ground, you still need to remember that your toes need to be 
reaching towards the ceiling in order for you to feel that your whole body is being engaged. If you're afraid of trying to kick up or you don't think that your body is strong enough, then you can do this exercise to teach your body the correct posture and also what it feels like to have your hips over your shoulders. When you're doing this exercise, your hands need to be straight, your core engaged, and your head looking back. The next exercise is a hollow body hold, and this requires a lot of core strength. So if you're not able to get your legs low enough, bring it higher, such that your back is still completely on the ground. So there shouldn't be no gap between your butt and your back. If you don't, then that could lead to injuries. Additionally, your shoulder blades should be off the ground. The next position is the pike hold, and the idea here is that all your weight should be on your hands and you are also engaging your core. Your hands should also be straight and if your hamstrings are not flexible enough, it's okay. Just lean into your hands. The last position is the frog stand and this helps with balancing. You don't need to be extremely strong to execute this exercise. It is a balancing exercise. Even if you don't think you're strong enough, you should still try to do a handstand because when I learned to do a handstand, I was not able to do a single push-up. So having bent arm strength and straight arm strength are totally different things. Some things that you should keep in mind when trying to do the handstand is that first you should try to kick up against the wall and if that doesn't work then you need to strengthen your muscles and fix your posture with the exercises that I provided. And then once you've done that you can try kicking up again and if you're able to do that then you can practice holding it until you can hold it there for 30 seconds with good form. Once you're confident with that, you can practice balancing against the wall by pressing your fingertips into the ground so that your feet come off the wall. So you are not taking your feet off the wall, you're pushing your fingers into the ground so that your feet come off the wall. And when you think you're ready, then you can try to do a free standing handstand. But just be careful when you fall out of the handstand because it can be dangerous if you don't know how to fall. I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did, please leave a like and comment if you have any questions relating to handstands or any videos you would like to see. Bye!